Hi everyone and welcome. I am Kim Beegler, the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I'm sitting at home in Hol uh, Harrisburg, not in Halsey, in Harrisburg, Oregon today. And I'm here to talk about wool and yarn and knitting and all of those things. This is a heavy wool processing and hand spinning video. So if that is your jam, learning about wool, learning about processing wool, uh, hand spinning and some knitting, we'll throw in some knitting too, then you're in the right place. Uh, if you're coming back to me, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, this is actually the hundredth episode. Ooh, I got a hair. Uh, the hundredth episode uh, up on YouTube. So that's exciting. I made it this far, right? And if you're listening to the audio only, there aren't that many there, but there are still quite a few. So it's a celebration either way. Uh, okay, so let's dive in because I have lots of mill videos in this episode and I have some spinning videos and I just have a lot of videos. So you're not going to hear me talking, just talking, talking as much, but I wanted to share a few things. Um, and start, we'll just start with what I'm working on because uh, it leads into the spinning videos. So we'll start there. Um, spinning. I've been doing a lot of spinning. Let's start with knitting and then I'll go. Well, we'll do both. Okay, spinning. So here is my current. And I think I've showed you all this before. So this is Shetland. Uh, this is my Shetland Moira. And Moira Rose, if you watch Shit's Creek, um, this is her fiber. This is her lamb's fleece that I saved. So it's about two years old uh, and I saved the whole fleece. So I'm still spinning it, but I'm getting close to the end. Here is some of the finish. And I think I've showed this. It's probably been a while, but here is some of the finished yarn. And I've been trying to find the right project for this and I haven't found it until I think this week. Um, if anybody, every, most everybody knows the pressed flowers knitting pattern by now. And there's the, there's all different versions of the cowl, sweater, all the things. There's a vest now that came out just this month. And I thought that could be it. I thought about doing the cowl, but I wanted to be a little more substantial of a project because I do have a fair amount. So I've got this, which is BFL. I've showed this before, hand spun also. Um, and I think that they would be really good together. They might be slightly heavier in weight. I think it calls for a sport. I don't know, actually, this is actually pretty good. So um, the BFL has been dyed this beautiful, like it's kind of just a variegated greens and minty color, like minty greens and just different. I think it'll be really pretty. If you have not seen, I do have a picture. So I immediately purchased it and thought this is it. And um, let me find a picture of it. This is by Savory Knitting, Press Flowers Vest. Here it is. I think you can see it pretty good. So my main color um, would be the natural Shetland because I know I have plenty of that. And then the little flowers, the breast flowers would be this green. So I think that's the goal. I may actually have enough to start it right away, but knitting on my calliope and I'm not allowed to start another bigger project until I get through the sleeves of my calliope, which you may say that's probably the end of the sweater, but we'll talk about it in a minute. So that's what I'm spinning. I also have a video, um, after I talk about the calliope, we'll talk about the other video. Um, but I do have a video of a spinning project. I just started on my Nano, so on my e-spinner, and I kind of walk you through how I prep the fiber and start spinning. Uh, it is really pretty. In fact, I'm not sure why I'm filming when I could be spinning that, but okay. Um, let me show you my calliope because here we are calliope time. Uh, okay. I'm actually, here's mine. Uh, this is top down. Obviously we've talked a fair amount about it given, and it's a little bit showing up a little bit red. It's a little more pinky than that, but I'm so thrilled with it. Um, I'm getting, I am about two rows away from, uh, doing the sleeve, separating for the sleeve. So we're just about there. I've tried it on. I tried it on a little bit back, um, probably an inch or so behind just to see where the, uh, the shoulders were starting to fall and they're going to be, I was like, is this too small? But again, it's going to relax. We're going to block it. Everything's going to be fine. I am knitting a size one. 
um, because I didn't want it. I didn't want a lot of extra room in this sweater. So, um, and it calls for a lot of positive ease. So I just want to size down so I wouldn't have as much positive ease. Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, modifying the sleeves because the sleeves they're not puffy but they're kind of just straight um, so in our Ravelry thread a really fun place to go whether you're doing this pattern or you're even thinking about sleeves for another pattern it's interesting to see how everybody's dealing with the sleeves I don't think I'm gonna modify at this point we'll see I did just find somebody else not in the middle long but who knit this in the size one and I think she modified the sleeves just a little bit but um, because this isn't going to be, I may end up modifying this. I don't know what I'm going to do. If you look at the pattern, the very bottom of it is a long cuff that's kind of just straight and um, you couldn't necessarily push it up and have it stay up. So we'll see. But I, I'm thrilled with it and I, and I actually decided, okay, I'm going to try to finish this by March 15th, which is the day we set. And I gave myself, I made myself a little schedule so that I could try to stick to it, but still, and not feel overwhelmed by it and not get too far behind, but not make it not be fun. Um, it is literally like at this point, I'm kind of on track. I wanted to be separating for the sleeves by the end of the month and I'm there. I'm going to do that this evening. And then it's like the body, basically you just knit away on the body. So I kind of divided it out into how many inches, how many rows that means I need to knit a day we should be okay. My goal is to have the body done um, by the end of this month, which should be fine. But keeping in mind that I want to work on lots of other things, <laughs> including the spinning project I just started. So um, there's my calliope. I'm very happy with it. There are people still jumping in, jump in if you want. Um, it's, it's just a really great place to learn also like doing this knit along and l listening to other people talk about it what they're modifying how they're changing it it's really interesting and you learn a lot so that's great um but because i have this new spin and i did this video i'm gonna and it, so if you're a hand spinner even if you're not you might find it fascinating but i work this is working with wool top uh and i don't as you all know do a lot of wool top but i do more with my nano now uh, and I'm trying to expand my horizons a little bit and work with more colors rather than just spinning and then dye. You know, I'm just mixing it up. I'm just mixing it up. So this is some dye top that I am going to spin. I kind of walk you through how I prep it. So let's head there. And there's lots of little tidbits I think that you may learn if you're a new spinner or if you don't spin a lot of top, there might be some tidbits in here that will be interesting to you. And um, we'll go cut to that. And then I think we'll come back and we'll talk about what's going on at the mill. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. All right, you all. So my kitten is here to help. Okay, I'm starting out a new spinning project on my Nano. Um, and on my Nano, these are wonderful, wonderful wheels. And I've had some people get a little frustrated with me for saying they're not great beginner wheels. This is my opinion. I, um, I think that they are a little more finicky as far as learning to spin on them. If you don't understand how a spinning wheel works, it's a little bit finicky. And so it would make it harder, I think. Also, it, is, it would love to spin a lace weight or very thin yarn. So because it loves to do that, that's what I do on it. And so I'm going to, this is for my Nano, um, this project that I'm working on, and I am going to do some top because I really like, I, I use the Nano as a way to like mix up what I usually do. So I'm going to be spinning this beautiful braid. And I know somebody mentioned um, that they got this. I got this at Lamb Town down in Dixon, California at the festival. It is from Pam's Garden. She does not have any website or anything like that. Um, Copperhead Red is what she called Copperhead Road, and it is 100% blue faced luster. 3.9 ounces. Okay, so here's this beautiful, and it's been over dyed, and by over dyed, I mean the natural, it was a natural color rather than white, um, probably grays and whites or something, and you can kind of see, I would say this has been over dyed just by what I can kind of tell some of the striations, like here we go. You can kind of see. Um, I'm gonna guess this was over dyed. I could be wrong though. But anyway, at any rate, I am going to go ahead and spin this up and I'm going to ply it 
with this. And um, the reason I picked this color, and this is actually from Dicentra, who is, I'll put her link in the show notes. She is a um, dyer from here in Oregon. She has been dying for a long time and she dyes up beautiful stuff. This is also BFL, I believe. I think I tried to, yeah. And this is, the soul is the rock, is what she called the color. So I picked this specifically to go with this. This is after I took my Jillian Marino class on just like playing with color and spinning. And um, and she thought said, you know, one way you can pick a color to go with a multicolor braid is just pick one color out if you wanna do a solid. I tend to not love the super, super marled, all transitional colors in my yarn, but I do like it because I think so it just kind of tones down all the different colors if you ply it with a solid, which is what I'm gonna do. So I kind of picked a color in there that will go with this. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and spin this first just because it seems exciting. And I was just gonna show you really quick how I am gonna prep this and we'll see if this side starts. Some people braid so that you can start it and then just pull and others do not. So this is actually just braided. So I'll have to go through in both ends. Um, I'll have to go through. Now I will, because I'm starting a new spin, I'll try both. Um, I'm gonna undo this while we're talking. I'm gonna undo the whole thing. I will um, make sure to try to spin from both ends of this top. There we go, there's some that will, just was towards the end. So now it'll just pull. So I'm gonna open the whole thing up. Uh, so I've got just one big long braid here. And then I'm gonna start just opening it up like widthwise. You guys, I didn't even know how to do this. I, I was not doing this correctly. Well, not that there's a right and a wrong, but you can just start, so you have that clump, just start opening it. And look at what happens, this is so magical. It just gets wider. See how much you can widen that out? So there's a part that I opened up versus a part that I didn't. So I'm gonna go through and actually open up widthwise. See how much that opens? And I'm just gonna go down and open the whole thing widthwise. And then I'll pop back on. Okay, so I went ahead through and I opened up, so you can see how thick all the way through. And it's basically repeating three colors. So it's got this kind of brown color here. It's got this, it's, it's kind of more on the green side, but it's showing up blue in here, kind of greeny teal color. And then it's got this browny red rust color. So I don't want to just spin, for me, I don't want to just spin all the way down this top. So what I'm gonna do is, I've already split one chunk out of the brown, the teal, and the rusty red color. And now what I'm gonna do so that my repeats go faster, if I just like pulled a whole piece off the long way down this, it would be really long and just arduous. So I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is just take small bits off of this. You could do this the same way. You can do so many things. You could split the colors up, just spin all of the rusty, you could spin all the teal, you could spin all the brown but I'm gonna go with kind of more of what the dyer had in mind. So I'm going to, I've split this little bit off and then I'm just gonna split small chunks lengthwise off of this. And I start in the middle and I'm just gonna pull a small amount and pull it all the way down the middle there. And I'm hoping so it's nice and thin. And see, and this could actually even be opened up a little bit more probably, but I'm hoping to not have to pre-draft anything else. And by pre-drafting, I mean actually attenuating the fibers full, like that. I think it's going to spin, because I'm gonna spin the short forward, I think I'll have enough control that I won't have to do that. I may have to open up widthwise a little more. So I'm just gonna pull small bits off like this, and I might switch up which direction I, you know, who knows, which direction I spin the color in, but you could do any number of things here. Um, and that's how I'm gonna spin it. And I'll probably prep this little bit um, so that it's ready to go and I'll show you in a minute and then I'll start, I'll just do a quick start to this spin for you. All right, I think we're ready to start. I'm going with, this is the 
end that is going to be easier for me to spin, but we'll find out in just a sec if I am correct. Actually, I've got my tension a little higher than I need it to be, but this end is spinning really well. And the way I can tell is usually you kind of start to get chunks. If you feel like you can't spin, I'm going to move back just a little bit so you can see some spinning here. Turn this down. Kind of have just a standard that I spin on on this wheel. But if you start to get chunks, if it feels like it's just not drafting smoothly, um, then try from the other side you should be able to have one side draft a little smoother. And I'm really happy that this is, um, I pull back a little bit so you guys can see me. Okay, my dog kind of jumped in and tried to uh, spill coffee, which we have to know that that is not aces. So we're back to it. And this fiber, I'm really happy with how it's spinning. This um, started with the rusty color and oh my goodness, uh, I'll show you all in a minute how beautiful it is. Cause you know, of course when you're spinning, it saturates more. So anyway, um, if for some reason this was not spinning well, then I would flip and I would start from the other end of this little roving bit. And I don't, um, A, I don't spin for perfection and B, I, I don't, you know, even prep my fiber for perfection when it comes to spinning top. So, there's gonna be chunks of this color that are longer, like in the rust, and they are, I don't really, I don't care. That's just part of the magic to see what happens. So here we are starting a new spin. All right, I'm gonna show you all really quickly what this color looks like. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Oof, can you see that beautiful rust? Gorgeous. Okay, so there we go, starting a new spin. I'll go through and prep some like that chunk that I, um, pulled off of the top. I'm going to prep that so that I can just kind of spin for a while without having to stop every time I finish a bit of rolling. So, okay, onward. Okay, I thought I'd show you really quickly. So this, that chunk of fiber that I pulled off the first uh, color repeats, I, I stripped it down longwise, that bit, and then I have these in little balls here. And the reason that I put them in balls is because when I walk away from this project, I'm gonna come back and know that these are prepped and this is the end I wanna spin on. So all of these little balls start with that rusty color because guaranteed I will walk away from the wheel for a little bit and then be like, which end should I spin from? So I've got all of these just prepped and ready to go so I can just spin, spin, spin without having to stop every time and strip stuff down. Over here is my big bit of top that I haven't prepped any more than just opening it up. And I did the same thing. I have it in my basket, but I have the part that's the um, part that I want to start spinning from on top so that again, when I come to it, I know this is the part that I want to start spinning from. And so as I keep prepping, it makes it easier along the way to not have to stop and which end am I spinning from every time. And you just waste a little bit less fiber. So, okay. I have to show you because I spun a little bit more because now I can't stop. Oof, that's gonna be gorgeous. Okay, I hope that helps, inspires, whatever, or you just found entertainment in it. I only stopped for a minute there. For anybody who's been listening or watching long enough, when I cut to something, I always like stop. I just stop and like feel like I have to wait. It's a very odd thing. I still do it, but it's shorter now. And then I'm like, wait, let's jump back in and get this done so we can get to our spinning. Actually, I'm going to go make some chili in the crock pot. I'm going to start that up. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about fiber. And I forgot one thing. I'll show you. So the upcoming video is what's going on at the mill. I am chugging at the mill now and I'm trying so hard to get some stuff restocked because the online shop is sad. In my last mill day, the fiber situation was I mean, there was some beautiful stuff, but there wasn't very much. So I'm really focused on trying to restock some stuff. First, I had to finish Fiber Club for January, and then I could kind of start pushing through some stuff. January Fiber. Hold on. Let me go grab it. Of course, the one thing I forget is the thing that I worked so hard on over the last couple weeks. So um, Fiber for, here it is. This is the end product. It's really beautiful. It is Merino, 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 Merino. So let's talk about Merino. <laughs> I 
and how I never process it. And I've got a couple of videos going through the process and you may understand now why I don't process it as much, but let me show you. It's really beautiful. There's a little bit of pilling in it. It actually did really well. So the reason I don't process a lot of Merino is it's a pain. How's that? It's beautiful, but it's a pain. One, we don't grow a ton of Merino in this part of the country. So I have to go out of my way to get Merino. Uh, two, it would be expensive if I, when I do buy it around here because you have to put a lot more work into growing Merino here in the Pacific Northwest because it's so dang wet. Um, so you have to protect the fleece. You have to do all sorts of things. Their feet don't do well in this kind of uh, wet. So it's just um, not a fiber that is easy to come by here. In addition, it's not a fiber that is super fun to process because it needs to be grown really well for it to process well through my machines and um, it, it's fine wool. So it's thinner, it's more prone to breaking if you are not kind to it. And it's definitely more prone to pilling through the process. Sometimes it's shortcuts. Those shortcuts do not drop out of merino fleeces and fine wool fleeces. And so when you are in sh second cuts, shortcuts are when a shear shears and then goes back to the same spot after they've already shorn it. So there's just little bits there. Stuff just doesn't fall out of fine wools like it does out of a lot of other wool, vegetable matter, that sort of thing. So somebody asked, why did you decide to do merino? So the fleeces that I got were, I got when I was down in California at Lambtown, uh, which is in Dixon. I've talked about it before. You can go back. I mean, I want to say 75% of the fleeces at the fleece sale were Merino because they're in California. It's a lot drier. It's just a better climate for growing Merino. Uh, so when in Rome, basically, right? Like get Merino. It was stunning. Also, I am not going to complain about the fact that I had to baby this fiber because it is, even when I started washing it, it was like, oh man, this is gorgeous. Which reminds me, do I have, I don't know if I got a video of me washing it. Yes, I did. Um, anyway, wore through it, but I did have to be extra careful with washing, which I've got videos of. I had to hand pick it. Washing, it's just heavy, lanolin. Uh, fine wool fleeces tend to be heavier in the lanolin and so it makes it a little more difficult to wash. Uh, sometimes it takes an extra wash so I needed to spend extra time washing which you'll see in a bit. I hand picked all of these fleeces because if I had tried to put them through my picker even though these fleeces have beautiful separation which I talk about in the upcoming videos they would not have done well through my picker. So I hand picked about 12 pounds of fiber just slowly and again if you're going to hand pick a fiber for 12 pounds it's not a bad fiber to hand pick by hand picking i mean i'm taking a clump and this is some of it and i am opening it up by hand and this is what the picker does but the picker because these fleeces were finer and the micron count was lower if there's any sort of a tangle at all it's going to get caught up in my picker in those big teeth in my picker and it's not going to do well it's going to break and then you're going to get a lot more pilling so i handpicked i spent a lot of nights watching hallmark and handpicking but it turned out lovely like i said there was a little bit of pilling but it is gorgeous uh here's a little bit that's left i have um it all sold out between the five basically fiber club people bought it up but i do have some more white that i need to hand pick i was gonna just sell the wool out as washed merino then i thought oh just hand pick it and have some more fiber for people to buy so i'm gonna finish hand picking that within the next couple days and it will be on the carter and watch for it uh, because i think a lot of my um patrons and people in the, maybe not people in the newsletter. They, the newsletter actually didn't get it. So make sure you're signed up for the newsletter. I can't say that enough, right? Get on the newsletter because that's where first stuff goes up after my Patreon. Um, obviously you're welcome to join my Patreon because it is a fun little community, but if you don't want to, I get it. And that's the next place. Um, so there will be some white. Uh, yeah, 
And then, and I talk about even just putting it on the carter was different. I had to play with the speeds of the carter. I had to play with how much fiber could go into the feed at a time, which is less, less, less than usual. So it takes longer to card. It was just a fiber that had to be babied. So I'm glad I'm through it. I'm glad everybody that got some absolutely loved it. It's super luscious. It's lovely to spin. I probably won't process Merino for it. It's been years, I mean, probably six, seven years. So, but you know what? It is beautiful. I also have some videos. So we have some videos going through that process. And then I have some videos of that Gulf Coast native that I talked about, I think two episodes ago. I finally get it through the picker on the carter. My relief is high because I'm not doing Merino. It's right after the Merino. So um, I have videos of that. I think that's all the videos I've got for you all for this time. I've already got videos for the next week, but um, I think we've got enough. So we're going to cut to those videos. And before I go, I wanted to mention uh, in the last episode, we were talking about Greenwood Fiber and their wool top. And somebody commented that they went onto Greenwood's uh, website and all they could find was roving we're talking about the same thing. I just wanted to clarify that. And I'm going to guess that the reason she refers to it as roving, which is probably the correct way to refer to it, because we talked about it in the last episode. When she runs it, she dyes the top, and then she runs it through her draw frame. Technically, then you're realigning fibers and they're probably not going to be perpendicular, which is what top is. So, um, I'm assuming that's why she calls it roving and not top, but it's the same fiber that we are talking about in the last episode. So, um, I think that's it. Let's cut to, I'm just gonna hold this up one more time. I do speaking up top. This is that Merino again, how differently this looks than if you buy already processed commercially processed Merino, it's night and day. How much crimp is left in this Merino versus if you're just buying, not just, but if you're buying a top, that's been commercially processed and or dyed so much of that life is gone from the fiber and it's definitely not gone from this fiber. So, um, I like to call it heritage Merino <laughs> because it just feels a little bit more connected to the animals, um, than commercially processed Merino and it spins differently too. So, okay. Enough talking about Merino. Let's go watch some videos. And I think I'll be back to say goodbye after that because there's a fair amount of videos in this one. So I will see you soon. Okay, we are back here at the washer and I'm gonna pull some of this over. Let me actually adjust the camera a little bit so you can see over this way a little bit more. So I am washing up some, too much. Um, okay, so we are at the washer and I am working on the very last batch of washing up. This is, um, fiber club wool. And this is something I don't do very often around here, but I'm going to show you here. This is hundred percent Merino. And I bought this wool. I bought four Merino fleeces down when I was in at Lambtown down in Dixon, California last year. And you can see that lovely, beautiful crimp. And I actually should steal a chunk of that for later. But here it is. So I do, I wouldn't say I've washed separately. Sometimes these will take an extra wash. These are pretty greasy as Merino tends to be. But what I do do, which is different, it takes a little extra minute, but this is something you can do at home, is you'll see I really, so some of this is, here's a good example, super compacted, right? And that's just a fine wool, right? That's how they grow. They're very, very dense. And so what I'll do when I'm washing, because you want the, the, the water and the soap to get through. So I really try to open up. I mean, I'm not like being super detailed about it, but especially for those really heavy, thick chunks, I will do a lot of opening because it allows the soap and the water to get through there better, right? So um, if it's super dense, it's just like anything, like, right? If your washing machine is too packed, it's not gonna wash as well. So I take the extra time to go through and really try to get those locks open. 
And when I, in between washes, I'll do the same thing. And I know it seems a little scary because it's like, oh, it's, it's you know, going to felt in general. I haven't had that issue. Um, you know, I'll go through. And it's also, honestly, a good time if you're handling it between washes. It lets you know, like, am I going to have a felting issue? Do I need to be more gentle or whatever on the next wash? But, um, but most of the time, those locks are pretty dense, especially with the finer wools. There still may be some lanolin in there, so they're going to open up pretty well. So I'll just go through this fleece, take an extra few minutes, just to really try to open everything up. And then otherwise, the wash will be the same. There won't be any other difference. And I do tend to wash less fine wools at a time, as far as poundage, like where I would be more willing to stuff more pounds in if it was a Romney or, you know, a non-fine wool. Fine wools, I tend to stick to my three pounds or so at a time for the same reason. It's already dense enough. Look at how gorgeous that is, though. Um, it's already dense enough. It doesn't need me to make the situation harder to get clean by packing the washing machine. And these fleeces tend to be a lot higher in lanolin. That's just the nature of fine wool, um, is that they tend to be higher lanolin fleeces. So they're just gonna, they need a little extra help getting them clean. Because of course the point in washing for me, this may not be everybody's point in washing, but the point in washing for me is to get that lanolin out. And I'll show you one of the things that I looked for when I was buying these fleeces is, I can find a good chunk. Um, what I like to see when I'm looking at a fine wool is that when I, there's a little, there are going to be, oh no, that's not a shortcut, that's just crimp. But when I look at it, I want to see, if I start to pull it open, I want to see that everything just opens up without getting knotted up, basically. So if when it's raw, and I'm starting to pull things apart and I see that it's breaking or getting caught up on each other and it's not separating well, I won't grab that fleece. Um, you know, if the tops, especially in fine wools, if the top is at all felted a little bit, um, it's not, for me, it's not going to process out well with my machines. So that's something I know I'm looking for. I just say I'm looking for good separation in a fiber when I'm getting, especially when I'm getting fine wools, but really when I get any wool, I wanna have a good separation. I don't wanna see that when I start to pull locks apart that they are getting caught up on each other because what's gonna happen is that's gonna get accentuated when it goes through the machinery. And if it's at all knotted, what's gonna happen? Like it's gonna kinda of knot up more and then get broken going through the harder machines. So, okay, I think I'll stop talking and finish up washing this and uh, we'll move along in the fiber club prep. Okay you all we are here at the Carter. I am here I promise. I am just gonna weigh out really quickly some of the fiber that I am putting on here. So let me show you. This is some really stunning well you'll have seen other videos of it but here is the merino so for fiber club i'll show you in a minute uh i was blending this is like a really light oatmeal color and i was blending it um with a white and this is the very last of this oatmeal so uh, there's gonna still be white in the machine but i decided i will go ahead and just run this last, I think it's like a half pound, run this last little batch of oatmeal by itself so it can be its own beautiful little uh, bit of fiber because it is a lovely color. I do have more white. I'm gonna take a little break from <laughs> the merino after this because I have handpicked all this and I just need a break. But I do have a little more white which I will get up relatively soon. So I, um, I ended up having to condition this fiber, even though it's pretty good humidity in here, what we usually fibers would do well with, the Merino did not. And I had to hand pick it all 
and I'm having to run it quite a bit lighter on the machine and then make some adjustments to the machine also uh, so that um, as far as speed so that it processes as well as I would like it to. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this started and we'll go see the other end. I still had a little pilling and I'm also going to show you the fiber club fiber, uh, which hopefully there'll be some left uh, after, after everybody gets a chance at it that is uh, in fiber club or on the newsletter or in Patreon. If you're not on the newsletter, jump in there, jump in there. Uh, you can get on my website and, and log in anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up. We do have a little bit of white in the machine. I'm hoping that'll carry us. Ooh, a Mitch came and cleaned out my vacuum system and it sounds so lovely. I like it when I turn the carter on and the vacuum system, I'll show you, it is just pulling fiber, not fiber. Well, it is probably, it's pulling some fiber for sure. It's also pulling dust and just like stuff that doesn't card. It also does this through the picker, but a lot of it is dust and debris. All right, so close up of this fiber. And let's go over and see if it's coming out. I think just the white is coming out right now. So we will wait a minute and we'll see the tan coming out in a minute. All right, we're getting more of that tan color. It's really not gonna be that much darker than the white when I was blending it. And I'm gonna put some of this into a tub now um, to collect. I don't know how much of this, I think that there was only about a half of a pound of it uh, left just in this brown color. So I'm not sure that will last very long but it is gorgeous there's a tiny bit of pilling but it's not too bad and it still spins up fiber club people are telling me it spins up like a dream and I would like to I'm gonna try to compare it with some other top just so you can see how different it is when merino is processed in a small facility versus a big facility where it's processed as tops okay onward Okay, I just wanted to show you some of what fiber club will like. You can see it's not gonna be very noticeable uh, versus what is coming off the machine. Oops, now, but it's the same. It's got just a really, really light, light tint of tan to it. It's um, very luscious. That's the general consensus. It is luscious and um, yeah. There it is. Not to be repeated for quite a while. I need a break from Merino. <laughs> See you all in a minute. All right, I wanted to show you all. This is that beautiful Gulf Coast native that I was talking about in the last vlog. See, look at that beautiful. It's just really lovely. So it's on the picker. I will have, I'll show you over here. I will have, um, I'll probably cart it on Thursday, so I'll get it up on Patreon on Thursday. There's only about three pounds starting out. So if you are interested in getting a little sample of this um, to see what Gulf Coast Native is like, then uh, keep an eye on Patreon. We're in the back with some of that Gulf Coast Native finally. And you can see just how springy it is. It is so, and I talked about this like two episodes ago. So if you want to hear more about Gulf Coast Native, that is the place to go. That is the place to go. But I wanted to show you, especially because in this episode, I'm showing you the Merino too. Oh, so nice not to be doing that. You know, it was a lovely fiber. Sorry, I'm trying to get you all set up here. The nice thing about this is I can process it more like what I'm used to. And so let me, I've already got a little bit coming out, but we'll get this last batch going. And uh, I think I said it in the last video, but when I turn my carter on and I can hear my vacuum system, it's such a happy day. Um, it slowly gets clogged 
in between cleanings. And that's how I know that it's not working is when I turn the carter on, I can't hear it, even if it is on and pumping. But, um, okay. So this is the last of this. I get to run. This is uh, three and a half ounces or so. I could run more, but I, uh, I don't think you need a big fat roving to spin. And that is something that it took me some time to figure out when I first started. I was making a lot heavier rovings, but it's not that fun to spin like that. But it does go, it processes faster, right? If I put in four ounces versus three and a half, it's gonna be a lot quicker for me to process. But I don't think that the fiber that comes out is as nice to spin. So let's pop around the other side. And this is so different from the Merino, so different where the merino is very dense coming off the carter. Even with less amount, this you can see, it just has a lot more spring. And I'm gonna stop it for a minute so you can kind of see up close. This is so springy still compared to the merino that comes off a lot more dense. Even though I was running less fiber at once, the roving itself looked a lot denser just because of the different fiber types. So. Here's our Gulf Coast Native. You can really still see so much crimp in it as it comes off. I'll run this again so you can just see it coming through there. Close you in. It's carding up beautifully. It's a lovely white and it's gonna be really nice to spin. I'm excited to have even just this one little fleece. Okay, there we go. To be clear, I totally just paused on that one. I was like, let me pack everything up while they're watching the videos. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I hope you enjoyed all the videos. I know there was some good information in there that you could take to processing at home too, whether it's from the hand spinning, how I was prepping my wool, um, or from washing that merino, you know, all wools need to be handled differently. And that's kind of the fun of working with wool, right? Whether you're washing it, carding it, doing it all yourself, spinning it for sure, it all needs special handling. So um, it's one of the joys. And even though I complain about processing merino, it was a joy. It certainly was a joy to work with it and have it in my hands and it's hard to beat that softness that you get from that. So, um, and I have another fine wool coming up in just another month or two in Fiber Club. So, oof, hopefully there will be, I bought a fair amount, so I think we'll have extra. Okay, that's all I got for this week. So I will see you next week. Everybody, thank you first off for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like what I'm doing here. Um, be kind to your neighbors, make so many pretty things. And oh my goodness, Continue to stay healthy. We all need to stay healthy, right? So that we can make all those pretty things. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Everybody take care.